Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested, and we are down here at Prop Store with Brandon Ellinger. Hey yeah. Norm. Good to see you. And you? And you have so many things here for your upcoming EMLA auction. Uh, I couldn't help but seize the opportunity to chat with you about some Star Trek stuff. I know you're a Trek guy. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. I, I pulled Couple the mic cool off ones. of Adam. I said, I'm covering <laughs> Trek. Uh, and you have a Items that are hand props, you have miniatures, you have costuming, pieces of set dressing. I want to start off with this piece right here. Okay. A filming yeah. miniature from Deep Space Nine. Yeah. The shuttlecraft. Yeah, this is a really nice model because um, it's actually, uh, it's built out with electronics and you can see there's some little interior detailing there. You've got a couple of pilots in the front of it and there's multiple mounting points on the shuttle, meaning oh. you know they were planning to film with it quite a bit. And so there are some access plates. Let's <gasps> see if we can get this to... To lift up for us here, you see in there. Oh wow! You can basically tie into a central armature with a threaded rod. Is it like a VGA port for yeah. like a computer yeah, system? That's the, for, for for old power? school electronics. Yeah. And um, our electronics guy actually built something to get it up and running, but it is all neon, and he says it gets very hot quickly, so of it course. should really only run for a couple of minutes. So for long-term display purposes, the neon lights would probably have to be changed out for modern LED. Yeah. But you know, back then that's how they did it, probably with big cooling fans on it. And in addition to that, I know this back plate will pull off. You can mount it from the back, and I think there's a side mount point somewhere as well um, but you get lights inside the, sh the shuttle there and these running lights on the side come to life so oh. it's a pretty nice model well, a couple things that stand out to me one that's the scale of this mm -hmm. it's a it's very large compared to the the enterprise scales because you know those are this is a shuttlecraft right should be tiny and it should be tiny yeah. but this is perfectly scaled for the two figurines inside right. which I don't know if I can't imagine that's the figures they had for filming because those look like off the shelf you know, Playmates action figures uh, from, from Kira and Cisco. It's a good question. DS9. Yeah, it's a good question. Or or were they far enough along into production, production. that those toys existed yeah. and that was therefore the fastest way to do it? It, it yeah, could be. Star question. Trek is peak Star Trek in those early 90s days. Uh, another thing is the, the aesthetic of this uh, because uh, I, I, it reads to me as perfect like early 90s Star mm -hmm. Trek aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Star Wars, a lot of angular lines, huge amount of wear. Uh, this is very curved look yeah. and not like the very sleek look that you saw maybe uh, the Enterprise E or the Voyager ships, right. the, the Delta Flyer. Uh, this is a shuttle off of the USS Defiant, which was the main ship from Deep yeah. Space Nine. Yeah. And it has that kind of so submarine aspect. It looks like it could very well be at home underwater. Yeah, it's interesting. Now that you say that, I'm thinking about it as it relates to the Defiant. It's interesting to kind of think about the different visual identities of each show. Yeah, the, the curved panel lines here. I love just the, these little decals here or the paint application, yeah. that reads Star Trek. That's yeah. like an L-Cars yeah. panel uh, that's all over the ship. Um, yeah, I can see that, what you're saying. And of course, they always do great work with the, the letter set or the, the sign writing, whatever you call it, the, yeah. the, the decaling that puts all the insignia and such on. Uh, the, the colors here too, I, I'm looking at the panels and there's one, two, three, four different panel colors very subtly different from mm -hmm. a bluer tint, green tint, you know, a cooler gray, a lighter gray. Uh, that it, it just speaks to how much, wow, how much effort that went into this and so much detail in the back too. It's also just a great sale for, scale for display, you know? It's like, if, if from a collecting point of view, to be able to put something like this on your desk, it's kind of the perfect size, unlike if you had, you know, the full D DS9 model, it's huge, right? And it eats up half the room and to you, display you said, it. You said your guy was able to go in and rework the electronics yes. to get it running Yeah, in, I mean, basically, yeah, to just get the existing neon powered, you know? Um, so there's some, you know, when you have a model like this, you always kind of deliberate between, do we want to live the, leave the original neon in it, or would we rather take the neon out and put it, put LEDs in so that we can mm -hmm. run it all day? Yes. But the neon is what was original, so sure. it's kind of like what's, you know, so in the moment it's been left in its neon state and the future owner can decide if that's should, how it should remain or if it should change to LED. Oh, wow. You can see all the pencil lines as well. Oh, uh, yeah. For that. Yeah, as, as the model makers just putting it together. Yeah, yeah. making this perfectly fit on top as a panel, as a hatch right there. Yeah, oh. and I think this is one as well, but they fit really snugly, you know, they are, they, oh. are, they are quite tight, but that's what you want to see with a model, you know, that's one thing we always look at with models is does it have mounting points because it shows that it was intended to be shot quite a bit and for this to have the mounting point in 
the uh, multiple electronic access points, it shows that it was a high quality build for the show. Do you know if they made, made just this one of this ship? That's a good question. I don't know the answer. It, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there were multiples or not. I believe we did screen match this. So we looked at an episode very carefully and looking at a lot of the wear patterns on mm -hmm. the panels, you can tell that it's this exact one. Yeah. Whether there was ever a second, I'm, I'm not sure. It yeah. wasn't as featured as the Defiant or right. of course as the space station. Right, it doesn't so play that often. I could yeah. imagine the studio wanting to pay for you know right. two or three of yeah, these. So, so May well be the yeah. one and only. Yeah. 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 Um, speaking of other hand built things, you have hand props here. Yes. I want to talk about some of these hand props. You have a type type two phaser, I believe. Yeah. It's a classic next generation DS9 era phaser. It's a really good weight to it. I think it's just solid cast resin, oh, right? Wow. So I don't think there's any electronics in that one. Is that the one that they call the Cobra head style? Maybe, yeah, yeah. It's got, got the wide, the wide body to it. It still has that classic 90s curve, yeah. you know, ribby here and aesthetic. I had so many versions of toys <laughs> of this as a kid, all with like the little clip on the back. Oh, they yeah. clip my yeah, waist yeah, before yeah. they had their own holsters. And it's really nice to see that nice blue tint. Yeah, power, power levels. And then in, in the show, they would have lights on some of the models for the hero ones where you would have two bars to indicate you know, okay. your, your power yeah. level. Yeah, so this is so probably that. more like a mid-grade version. Yeah. Not necessarily intended for close-ups, but maybe a holster stuff or yeah, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Still a great condition. But uh, I gotta say, the tricorder may yeah. outshine the phaser even. Oh, okay. Because this one has got some life to it. You wanna open that so, up? Yeah, here, we'll do a reveal. That is the medical oh, tricorder. Oh, wow. And I know they Look did Look at those electronics. Look at that light pattern. Do you know the... Um, the hidden Mickey on this one? No, no, I don't. You see right there on the... Okay, yeah. That's, that's the little robot from Mystery Science yes. Theater 3000. What's it, is it Crow or Tom Servo? Yeah. That, that's that's one Tom, of those yeah. little guys there on the sticker. Wow. Um, and I guess you've got the identification plate down here that says this is a seven, so mm -hmm. I think it's the Mark Seven. And I know they had all different styles of tricorders as, as the show went on. And so. there's a medical tricorder because it has this additional piece at the top. Right, and that does come out as well. Let's see if we can get that one out. I love how much lighting activities in this one. Yeah, so that, here, try, I'll let you do it. Try the button on that, see and if it comes to light. Yeah, just a little, little flash like of the Oh, green. there it goes, yeah, oh, yeah. it's for when you hold it. So yes. for, you know, like, if you're Gates someone. McFadden, right. using this, Beverly Crusher, scanning someone, it's a part of the acting, you're holding yeah. it up to someone's head, and you're pressing it as you're doing the scanning. Yeah, yeah. Like that. How do I look, and, healthy? Uh, yeah, I need, I need the tricorder yeah. to do the reading. Yeah. This just gives me the, oh. Wow. That's actually a COVID test. Uh, yeah. yes. yeah. <laughs> and is this, is this machined, machined aluminum? Yes, yeah, yeah. Wow. I love these props. The tricorder is one of my all time favorite Star Trek props. Just, I mean, look how much is going on in that. Yeah, I, I think of the modern day fan, you know, fan made tricorders, the replicas and the electronics you can put in here, way more accessible for, but for them, it's custom, custom boards for them. Oh, so is that right? That, yeah. yeah. Is that what they did at the yeah. time? Yeah. And that hey, pattern, check it out. a distinct pattern that goes, Slots right in there. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, that's Very a good cool. one. That's a nice one. It's, it's been a while since we've had a tricorder with lights come through our hands. Yeah. So, And then we also have some great costume pieces in the auction. Uh, this is one of them. And I think this is the first wharf sash that we've ever had. This thing's really cool. I mean, these are all metal fittings and real leather straps. And I guess these emblems here are specific to some of the Next Gen Era films, like okay. First Contract and Insurrection. So slightly different to what he had in the actual Next Gen show, uh, but feel the weight of that. Yes. Oh, so this is probably what he wore, you know, post First Contact when he went on a DS9. I like think that that's era right. yeah. of yeah. Worf. But the, oh, wow. This construction, yeah, this is a great weight and a great sound to it too. Yeah, it does, yeah. And I heard they never made that many of these. I heard that's the reason that there aren't that many out in collector's wow. hands is, you know, it was a solid piece and they would just reuse it a lot, so. A Klingon heirloom. Yes, yeah. yeah. I, but I love the emblems, you know, with the, the Klingon lettering in it there. Really nice. Uh, I, I love the world building that Star Trek does. And one of those iconic kind of graphic design pieces are the schematics of the ship. I'm the, the kid who had the, the technical manuals growing up. Yeah. Um, and the panels here, you have an example of a panel here. I believe this is from the, uh, one of the films. Yeah, is this, right? is, this is Generations. And you'll probably know because you're a Trek guy, but this apparently is a plot point. Yes, I, you know how I know. It's this, the text here. So in Generations, Geordi gets kidnapped. He gets kidnapped and his visor gets hacked to oh, kind right, of be right, like right. a yeah. sleeper agent. Yeah, I remember. Uh, and so they, they're peering through his visor and they want to identify the frequency of the ship's shields so they can destroy the Enterprise. And, and Enterprise it's there D on the Elkars. Gets, yeah. And it's yeah. on this schematic, which is of the Elkars design, yeah. Michael Okuda, Denise Okuda's design. And this is an Okudagram. 
That's a, what oh, they would that, call is it. That, is that the, the yeah, okay. this is the style of the schematic. The Very larger cool. scale ones, uh, they would have Easter eggs on the different decks. So like where you would have the shuttle bay right here, for example, uh, they would have a duck, a, a full size oh, shuttle okay. size duck in there. Oh, that's cool. As, as, a, as a graphic. Uh, but this one- We have to look for those version. in the future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the construction of this is gorgeous because you have you know the, the, um, the light that comes through, right? So you can illuminate from the back. It's not yep. an active panel, but it has that kind of active panel look to it yeah and even the paint application like what this is supposed to evoke is a, a cross section you imagine in their their story this band here goes across the ship and it's a different graphic where that cross section is as opposed to where what you see uh, as the cross section see. of yeah. that ship yeah. yeah which is all part of that storytelling of like that this is the how you would actually operate the ship in engineering yeah and or, i think everything you're saying kind of shows how much thought has to go into every little bit of everything. Because, yeah. I mean, this one actually did play as a plot point in the mm -hmm. film, but a lot of these, of course, get made and they never get seen in close up. Yeah. But still, someone sat down and thought it out to make sure that there's a logic that holds up, right? And, and this is glass, right? This is, is, is it? I don't is know it, if it's glass or plexi. Oh, I, th I think it's, I think it, it may be plexi. It, it, it's so solid. I mean, fans yeah. have done their replicates, but it's also like painted from the back. It's, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, beautiful, beautiful piece, whoever gets to have that eventually. And a great size also. It would look really good, obviously backlit in a frame on the wall. It would look fantastic. Are you trying to sell me on, on, on this? Uh, we can talk, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of great things from the world of Star Trek, including costumes as well. Uh, the auction is this month. Yeah, June 21st to 24th. So we're we're looking forward to it. And of course, all the info is on our website, propstore.com. Awesome, thank you so much, Brandon. Yep. And uh, we'll see you in the future.